Okay, well, welcome. Uh, today we have Molly Dar and I, uh, Dr. Molly Dar, I, my apologies. I, um, my printer stopped working, so I'm like working off of like two computers right now. Okay. Oh, perfect timing. Yeah, I think there is a bit of a lag as well. Um, I live like in a hole uh, and- yeah. Yeah. So it's really unfortunate and it's not the best place to be whenever you're trying to like have fireside chats with people, but it's what I've got right now. So I'm working on it. You know, we'll see if they ever get good internet down here, but that's right. Okay. Yep. You. All right. Well, Molly, here's Look your bio. What we got. That's great. That's right. Here's your bio if you're ready for it. Okay. So Dr. Molly Dar is a forest entomologist working in the Department of Forestry and Environmental Conservation at Clemson University in the Regional Forest Health Program as a postdoctoral associate in Dr. David Coyle's Forest Health and Invasive Species Extension Lab. She coordinates the Southern Forest Health and Invasive Species Program which provides education and training to forestry professionals across the southeastern U.S. Molly is also a co-founder of Women Owning Woodlands, uh, South Carolina. And you know, there's a saying, if you trap a person in invasive species, you feed them for a day. But if you teach a person how to catch invasives, you feed them for a lifetime. Molly is changing people's and plant communities' <laughs> lives in the Southeast. And it's so exciting to have you on, Molly, to tell us how you do that and what exactly you do to do. So there you go. That's what I've got. <laughs> Thank you so much. It's so terrific to be here. Yeah, cool. That was right. excellent. I, okay, thank good. you so much. You, you definitely you make me sound great. <laughs> Well, you know, like, that's just what you do. And sometimes when you hear it back, uh, especially all in one big chunk, you know, it's like, uh, I don't know, that's, I don't know if that's me, but you know, it is like it is you. So yeah, I'm glad you do what you do. So Molly, if we can just start with okay. who is Dr. Molly Dar and what do you do? And you can start back as far as you want. Or you can start as recent as you want. It's your story, so go ahead. Okay. I have a tendency to ramble, so I'll try and keep it tight, or at least linear. Um, and so I, I grew up in rural northern Virginia. Um, so when I talk about my hometown, like to paint a picture, I, there still is not a stoplight there. It is truly in the middle of nowhere. And I think because of that, um, and that our closest neighbors were like miles away, um, my younger brother and I were left to our own devices for entertainment, which basically just meant exploring outside. Um, and so I think that that sent me on the fast track to stick with natural resources and study forestry and bugs and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, I don't know. So I, I went to um, Virginia Tech for my bachelor's degree and I majored in wildlife science because that was a lot flashier at the time than forestry. I, I do have regrets. I, I really wish I'd gotten that forestry degree, but um, we're making the most with what we got here. It, it gave me a good holistic approach for what I do now. Um, and then I took some time off and I traveled around out west and lived out of my truck and did the whole early 20s thing and, and, and realized very quickly that a bachelor's degree won't get you terribly far in the sciences, unfortunately, um, kind of bouncing around just from seasonal tech job to seasonal tech job, which I loved. I mean, you're really in it. Um, the thing that I didn't like was trying to find internet to constantly be applying for the next position when funding would run out. So. Anyway, that, that got old after, after a few years, and, um, and that's when I decided to come back to grad school. Um, I definitely shopped around, but the place that kept calling me back was in Blacksburg. So I went, I went back to Virginia Tech for my um, degree in entomology, and um, it was really wonderful to return to Southern Virginia. That place has such a special 
place in my heart, it, it, it definitely always will. Um, and it has such a rich ecosystem that I didn't realize how lucky I was until I moved out of it to um, have studied there for so long. Um, so yeah, so that's where I, I, I was going to pursue a master's degree, but one thing led to another and we just went straight to PhD. I, I, I guess that's how people are doing it. A lot of these agricultural yeah. schools are doing it now. Um, so I, I majored in forest entomology. Um, and I studied the hemlock woolly adelgid, um, specifically biological control um, of that species. So I worked with what ultimately was a, a failure, but that's important science too, I'm told, <laughs> um, a tiny little lady beetle that wasn't a great biological control agent. Um, oh. But that's what I spent like five years doing there. And I, uh, yeah, basically oh, that's, that's cool. it. So then, I don't know. See, I do ramble. Um, <laughs> no, no, this is good. So, so, okay. So I graduated so in 2017. There, yeah. Um, yeah, okay, that's it, please. Stop me. <laughs> no, no, I think it's great. So you graduated <laughs> in 2017. And then did you go straight from there to where you are now? Yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. Wait, so... I did, yes. So I also found my husband in grad school, and he got a job out in Washington. Hey, and good so job. I'm glad you found too. him. That's awesome. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right across the hall. Very convenient. That's cool. That's cool. No, I do the same. I mean, but well, I started young, so like ours was uh, undergrad. How did you, what, why did you make that decision to go um, to where you are now? Um, to, oh, out, out to Washington specifically or the, yeah. the my Oh, no, of, at, no, sorry. After, sorry. after, um, grad school, what led you to that postdoc? Oh, gotcha. Yeah. So I, so yeah, so Louis, Louis is my husband. He's an entomologist too, and he studies tree fruit, um, tree okay. fruit pests. So Wenatchee, Washington, where I live now is a tree fruit valley. And it's one of its major exports is pears, apples, and cherries. So mm. that's what he's doing. Good for him. I came out here and work was scarce and I ended up working for a pesticide distribution company as their researcher. And while I am, I am honestly, I'm very happy to have gotten so much pesticide um, knowledge and expo exposure, not, not, not actual pesticide exposure, but exposure <laughs> to pesticides. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, the knowledge. So I'm glad to, to have that knowledge now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but at the end of the day, it was, I was really just a sales rep and that, that is not what I went to school to do. So right. I, um, I lasted a year and then I was like, I got to get the heck out of here. Um, so I contacted all of my friends and colleagues from back East who I was just, I was just so blown away by the community that I got thrown into right out the gate, um, at Virginia Tech and studying through the, the Southeastern region. It's, it's a really, it's a really tight knit close group of people and, and they really seem to take care of their own. So um, once I put my name back out there, I was kind of directed pretty quickly into the direction of Dr. David Coyle. Um, and he had just accepted a position as a 100% extension faculty at Clemson um, where he works in forest health. And they said that they were looking, he was potentially looking for a part-time person to take over this incredible program that he had built before he took on the role at Clemson. So um, that is the program that I help run now. That is sort of the, uh, the aggregate for all invasive species information for the Southeastern region of the United States. So he was looking for somebody to carry on that program because he was gonna be way too busy um, with his new faculty position. And lucky for me, it, it just kind of um, snowballed from there. So. Uh, he was able to offer me a postdoc appointment pretty quickly um, after we got to talking and, um, you know, we compared notes and backgrounds and resources. And um, so I started up with him in October of 2018. And I, I love my job. And I, I feel so lucky to be able to say that as an early career professional, especially in, in the time that we're in now where positions are, are difficult to come by and you know, you count yourself lucky to be able to work at all. Um, and my position, 
I also feel very fortunate to be working with Dave specifically. He's a terrific mentor. He's a very conscientious person, but he also is flexible enough that he allows me to, from the start, work entirely remotely. I still get to stick with my roots in the Southeast, which is very important to me. I can continue to pursue forest entomology, um, which I have, you know, absolutely fallen in love with and would like to build a career in that direction. But as I was warned very early on, it's difficult in a dual career household um, for you both to continue to do that. So yeah. Dave has made that possible for me. Um, and I'll always so be awesome. so grateful to him for that. So, um, so basically it, it kind of, we've just been building it from there. But um, before the pandemic, I, I was able to fly back East about, I, it got to be about monthly, especially on the on season. So um, I got to, I get homesick and, and, and it was nice to be able to kind of go back to my old stomping grounds and we could have face-to-face -face interfaces and I could run workshops with him. And, and in the off time, I would just do everything else online. And it's, it's been great. It's been great. That's awesome. No, I mean, that's such a cool story to, uh, be able to go back and look for something, you know, in that area and find it a, but be like yeah. that flexibility. I mean, I understand that completely. Uh, like when my wife and I, you know, we've had a couple of, you know, intersections in our career where we're like, Oh, should I go this way? Well, what about you? Like where would that land us? And yeah. like to be able to both pursue, um, something in different parts of the world. That's, that's tough. And uh, a lot of people have to, they make that move apart and that's hard. Um, Absolutely. So what an awesome opportunity that, you know, you were afforded, but you earned, you know, and that's really cool too. Yeah, uh, I right. suppose like, that's the thing is like, had you not been a child of the Southeast in a sense, like, you know, you probably wouldn't have been able to pull that off. Um, that that yeah. an intimate knowledge of the culture of where you came from, the species, what you're up against and just rubbing shoulders with the people of the South, you know. Like, I'm sure that definitely had a huge part of it. So credit to you for going back to your roots. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks. It definitely feels right. <laughs> yeah, no, that's cool. That's cool. And I know that too, um, as well from experience, you know, like uh, my wife and I, we had, we had two kids, we have four kids. And when we had two kids, um, we moved to Australia and, wow. and it wasn't until we moved back that... I realized like, wow, you know, Oklahoma, like it's got a lot going on biologically speaking. And, um, I mean, a lot of other ways too, but, uh, I mean, definitely as a biologist, it's a really cool place to be. And, um, but yeah, you definitely have to kind of move around and, you know, until you can figure that out. So yeah, it takes yeah. some separation. That's so it cool does. that you lived in Australia. Oh yeah. It is so cool that I lived in Australia. <laughs> it was <laughs> such a cool place. It is such a cool place. And yeah, the people, culture, all that, you know, I love it. Um, but yeah, uh, don't get me started. I'll like start crying about not being in Australia again. So um, I studied in New Zealand during undergrad for a year. Oh, so that's I, super I can cool. Definitely I, I can relate to uh, like, don't yeah. get me started because I will not shut up. Like that. <laughs> so I know. Funny. I know. Oh, like, it's so beautiful. I, you know, I love, I love it here and I'm not going to knock anything about it uh, right now. But, you know, like, man, there's something about uh, the Southern Hemisphere. Like, I don't know. It's cool. Really back. Pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty good. Cool. Okay. Yeah. I, 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 don't, I, I can already tell this is not a path we need to go down. But yeah. um, but please later share me any contacts you have in New Zealand so that I can make uh, travel arrangements and uh, find a job. So Vice versa. Sounds good. All right. All right. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So, God, there's so many. There really are, like, about five different ways question is i want to ask right now um okay. so first yeah yeah first let's stick with kind of because we're already talking about uh your job your postdoc that you're doing right now um doing doing extension outreach uh that kind of work what is it about that that you enjoy like what what is it about um your job in particular that you enjoy and then that aspect of the outreach i love that question I, okay, good. That is definitely, when I was doing so much soul searching out of graduate school, trying to figure out, yeah, where do I fit in in the scientific community? I, I definitely, it, it, I, I'm so happy that I eventually came to Extension because it, it really didn't seem, I don't know, like for me conducting independent research and I mean, <laughs> stats is not my forte. 
I, I like the idea. Yeah. I just, I don't know. My brain doesn't work that way. And, and even in, in grad school, the thing that would get me jazzed is when I was able to um, work with, like we started a bug camp at Virginia Tech and, and we got That's to work cool. with the community a bunch and talk to the kids a bunch and see how psyched that they were to be handling insects. Like before, you know, society told them that they were gross and scary. Like yeah. they, didn't care. they didn't think so. Um, and so I realized that I think being a scientific communicator, sort of the, the translator in between academia and the public is, is very much where I feel comfortable and, and it's it is a very rewarding place to be. Um, yeah. So no, I totally get that. Yeah. First, I mean, like, oh my god, that's <laughs> yeah, definitely. I mean, a, I mean, you had me from stats wasn't my thing, <laughs> but after that, I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, I mean, like, it is, it is. There are two different worlds. If you're a pure researcher, um, or you know, like eighty twenty, or you know, whatever your ratio is yeah. of research to teaching or whatever. Um, and even that, like teaching in the classroom is not the same as uh, teaching to, um, you know, Joe Buck pre-biology study, you know, like oh, it, totally. that's, that's very different, you know, and uh, I love that community work as well. That's actually, that's actually what we went to Australia to do. Um, we really? actually did. Yeah, I worked in like neighborhood community centers and schools and stuff and uh, yeah, and it's just like, man, that's that's rewarding stuff because it. <laughs> I mean, you literally said what I said in the bio as a joke, but like, it's true, isn't it? I mean, like, if you teach a kid or an adult or whatever to have this appreciation for it, like that sticks with them for life, and it's like it really is life changing. Like, my story is kind of similar to yours in the sense that I grew up in the woods, um, yeah. but like, what if I hadn't? You know, what if I hadn't had that privilege and I wasn't exposed to the woods? Because, you know, I know that you have working with kids and probably adults too through extension, seeing people who did not have that same experience. And like, it's like, it's a whole nother world that they didn't know existed. So to be able to do that outreach, that's, that's really cool that it resonates with you. I, I understand that for sure. Yeah. Yeah. See, I can ramble too. It's not just you. No, no, I'm just, I'm thinking in my own, it's like, there, there are so many questions that I want to circle back and ask you, I guess, offline, but yeah. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. We, we can have our own personal chat doing. later. It's all good. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a privilege. And that's something that I've definitely recognized as I've started doing this professionally is not only, I mean, so many folks, and I mean, so many kids don't even know that these career trajectories are possible for them. Yeah. They aren't able to go muck around outside they aren't able to get to those destinations and say they don't they don't know that that's that they don't even know what science really looks like and that they are qualified to do it it's it's not yeah. just a bunch of eggheads in their ivory tower and i won't get too political but i think that this is a very important time for science oh yeah push you know and, and so if you can show people what how many different ways that science can look and that it really does affect them personally then that can affect real change. Going back to your joke that isn't quite a joke that I loved in, in, in the bio. Yeah, I think yeah. it's completely true. <laughs> it is, yeah. No, that's cool. I'm with you on that too. I mean, science literacy, uh, it, in some ways it's everything. Because I mean, you know, we're taught, well, we should be taught anyways that science is, you know, it's a branch of philosophy, right? It's a way of understanding. And so, I mean, from that aspect, uh, it, it it shouldn't, it's not, it should not be a political thing, right? I mean, some people try to make it that, but like, it's literally, it's literally just about understanding the world through experience, through observation, through experimentation, all that, right? I mean, we know that yeah. it's a way of thinking. It's how to think. And so, yeah, wouldn't it be nice if more people knew how to think, you know, just like look at data, you know, let's make good database decisions. And right. yeah, so yeah, I know we can, we can go that. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother chat. Yeah. <laughs> But no, that's cool. That's cool. Okay. So I think we kind of covered that aspect, you know, why you enjoy the outreach. Um, uh, I wanted to ask you as well, uh, what is a success story that's kind of going on in invasive species? Because I mean, like Woolly Adelgid, uh, EAB, there, 
at Emerald Ashbor. Like, obviously, there's so many not going that successful stories right now. But like, what are what is a story that maybe could make me not feel depressed when I go to bed tonight? That's a very good question. And please I'm think of, my brain. Please think of one. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. No, no, no. Okay, okay, okay. I think, well, all right. What's coming to mind right now? So, I mean, there, there have been biological control agents that have worked. Like, there's a purple loose strife beetle that was released and it totally took care. Of, you know, it, it, it did a good job in knocking back the, um, the, uh, the invasive species where you introduce it. Um, mm -hmm. Out here in orchards, there's there's lots of folks that are um, making their spray programs a lot softer and boosting natural enemies and seeing how that really does affect the pests that we see in the tree fruit out here, especially in pears. Yeah, um, no, that makes a huge difference. Yeah, that's, yeah. A, that's very important, yeah. And if you can show people that it works and you have to, after years of communication and um, <laughs> working with them personally and, and letting them understand that they can trust you, which I, I understand, you know, that is asking a lot. It is their livelihood. Yeah. Um, but it's cool when you can see people starting to come around and understand that they don't need to, like, absolutely nuke their orchards. And that's not the best long-term solution that actually makes things worse. And here's how yeah. ecology works and everything like that. So on a smaller scale... I, I do see those as success stories. Um, when you ask the question though, the, the first thing that comes to mind, I, I really hope and I think is what um, Dr. Coyle is up to in South Carolina right now. So he's in a really interesting position where they're at the forefront of emerald ash borer, or sorry, Asian longhorn beetle coming in. Oh yeah, that state. right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, which is really scary at first. Um, but they're catching it early enough that I think that there's, and they, they have enough experience working with insects like this, that I think that there's some real potential that we could actually contain it. And um, I think it's a really unique position that he's in where we can, he is able to implement all of the things that he's learned, all of the excellent resources and colleagues that he has gained through his illustrious career so far. And he's already got these terrific grad students working for him. I, I can't wait to see what they get accomplished in the next five years or 10 years, you know? That's cool. Um, I think that the, he's already, the way that, I don't know. So everybody knows Dave Coyle's name because he is so good at what he does. So that helps because um, people are able to, he can reach out to his network. They can talk to others. They can talk to others. And they know that he's a trusted name in science and the whole yeah. trusted network kind of, um, they can just get it get each other on the phone and get a good idea of exactly where this pest is occurring. Um, so you don't have to be the only boots on the ground trying to figure out where it may be spreading, how long it's been there. They're already getting a really good idea of what's going on. Um, so I'm hoping, I mean, we'll keep, we'll keep our fingers crossed and, and um, luckily they're, they're giving us great publications in real time um, on the progress that they've been making. But I think that that could be, a really good success story. And it's also helping us understand these failures, if I guess if you call them that, of like emerald ash borer or laurel wilt. Um, you can see how big of a difference public education actually makes because if you look at the maps of the spread of these insects, they are hopping over, you know, counties and half of the state lines where you see, okay, there's a population here and there's one way over here. Well, mm. the insect didn't fly that far. How the heck did that happen? Yeah. People are moving their firewood. And so if you can just get that simple message across, like, I know right. it's really tempting to bring your firewood with you when you go camping, but there are real consequences to that. And it, if you can get people to trust that message and implement it and tell their friends, then those failures hopefully will inform down the road. We can, we can stop stop it from happening before it gets so blown out of proportion that, you know, there's nothing that we can really do at this point. Um, yeah, no, that, that's, that's fantastic. And I know, I know that's kind of like a, almost like a setup question because like, that's, that's not, um, that's not what you hear. You, you don't hear the success stories with invasives and that's because they are invasive. And especially in the case of like, we're talking like, I think everything we mentioned is an exotic species, right? Um, right. And, uh, yeah, I mean, like, you know, it's, um, yeah, like, that's just a losing battle no matter what, in some senses, 
but I love that you, you mentioned the word trust several times. And, uh, and I think that is, it's just, it's so important, you know, like, um, the world happiness index, are you familiar with that? Okay. So, okay. So like, it's, uh, basically like what they found is some, in some of the happiest countries, um, that, uh, trust like interpersonal trust is, um, like the highest in the happiest countries. And, you know, like it makes so much sense. Like when you think of, you know, in a battle, in a war, whatever it takes, I mean, like everybody trusts each other, right? Like you have to, that's like, Hey, it's like the rule and you get kicked out. Right. Um, but I mean, like, it's the only way is to, to beat an enemy is to have high levels of trust throughout your organization. And like, it sounds like what uh, David has got going on is, um, you know, that high level of trust working with all the stakeholders, whatever you want to call them, their people, right? They're people at who are, you know, the people who camp yeah. out or people that run like managed land, you know, where people camp to people in government or in other universities and extensions. And that's, that's really cool. That's, I mean, yeah. I, I've, I, you know, what, what I really thought of, um, I used to work in oil and gas and, uh, one of my jobs that I worked up to, cause I, my job used to be just like using a shovel. And, uh, what I worked up to at, at a point was to go out to landowners and, you know, kind of do negotiation for if we had an oil spill, um, what our cleanup was going to be, how we were going to replace their pin oak tree that, it was killed or whatever it was and um yeah and like you know what i found was like i spent a lot of time out there um just talking to them all the time and my boss was you know like you're spending a lot of time out there talking to them all the time (laughs) and it's like yeah but at the end of the day like they were happy to see like a representative of this company you know um yeah, and I just think like it, it really does. It comes back to that trust. Uh, how are you going to get somebody to really have buy-in? Yeah, so that's that's really cool. I love hearing that. That's a, that's a that's, exactly that's a what great I... great message for invasive uh, ecology. Yeah, what you said is so true. I mean, you brought it together. I think what I was trying to articulate, but didn't get around to, in that it's it's on us too. Like, and so that's why you were successful in your position, and why I think. Dave has been able to garner all of these working relationships too, is like helping, it's it's on us as the experts to let people know that it's just like, look, I get where you're coming from. I get why you're frustrated and I get why, you know, you maybe turn a side eye towards positions of authority coming onto your land and telling you what you need to do. And the longer that you talk with them and the more that you actually take a minute to listen to their perspective too, exactly like you were saying i i really think that it makes all the all the difference and it's yeah. definitely something that i need to keep in mind too when i'm just like shoveling in as many facts as i can just to see <laughs> yeah. with these other people and it's just like yeah, why do they yeah. care what the heck i have to say you know no well anyway. and i think too it's so cool um you know that you are with an extension that's in a in a region that you're from too i think that you know not to say that that's like vital and like it you know other people can't do it obviously they do um but i think that is cool and i it shows you know probably a lot of wisdom on uh uh dr coyle's part too you know um and who he who he picked you know for that job so i think that's cool i'll I'll be sure to tell him that thank you (laughs) yeah no i it's a i mean you're a testament you know from uh or you know to his name i mean you know because that's you know he knew who he was hiring you know like he's making good decisions so i think that's cool um okay so Another, we'll shift like completely away from invasive species and all that stuff. Uh, I wanted to ask you about um, women owning, is it woodland? I, I, I lost my paper. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Oh, that's all right. great. So that's tell great. So, woodlands, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Tell me about that because uh, I just think that sounds, it sounds cool, A, um, and, and I just love hearing stories about this. So please go ahead. Well, tell me if I'm going too long in my answers too, because I just realized how long I've already kept you on here. Uh, no, it's it's all good. Don't worry about it. I'll just like, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut like some of this stuff and 
uh, and Sorry. just like shorten it that way it, it's a more digestible video no because honestly i yeah. never talk this but i have never like cut a video ever and uh usually like i'm just not as engaged in terms of like uh bringing my story into it so sorry like for some reason i love it ran- i love it rambling, I have- so I keep forgetting that we're not just in a conversation. I think that's my problem. It's just like, yeah, well, all of this. That's, that's the point. That's the point. And so hopefully, yeah. like, you know, I think you'll see that in, like, the other chats. If you, you know, look at them, like, I, it, it is really literally just a chat. And that's what we're kind of going for. So, yeah, right. go ahead. Because oh, whatever we say can be cut and all that. Don't worry about it. Like, if you say okay. I'm embarrassed, I'll just cut it. Don't worry about it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right, cool. So All right, women only just, woodlands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, tell me about women. Oh, I see, I'm going to get it wrong again. Okay, tell me about women <laughs> owning woodlands in South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so I was lucky enough to meet Janet Steele, and she is a area extension agent um, in Orangeburg. So she's an extension agent with Clemson. And I met her at a training that we were doing in Auburn the first year that I was, that I was there. And um, she took a chance on me and she, she is one of my, I just love Janet so much. She is such, she, she is a mentor that I hold close to my heart because for one thing, she's a dang pioneer. Like there are not many women in forestry period and she's yeah. been at it for a while and she just does it with this humble grace, approachable, but knowledgeable. I don't know. I'm, I'm obsessed with the woman. And she, she's of course <laughs> like, she's so... She hates when I compliment her. She can't, she really, she can't handle it. She's just like, oh, oh hush. Like, but I, I, I can't get enough of her. And I, I can't, I love spreading the word about um, how talented and important she is in, in this initiative. So she told me a little bit about it. And um, she had just garnered, garnered funding um, from SAF to start the South Carolina chapter, um, which is part of this national network. Um, so it's women all across the country. And not every state is represented yet, but it's it's growing and it's growing quickly. Um, okay. And from what I understand, it's it's really people who um, it's not their primary job. They're usually working in nonprofits or they're extension agents themselves. It's people from all different kinds of backgrounds, and they do it because they they believe in it. So basically, what it is is an educational program that creates a space for women landowners or, I mean, I don't own any land, but aspirational landowners or people who are interested in the subject matter to come and learn all of the ins and outs about land management. And so that can look like chainsaw training or um, how wills work, how inheritance works, all the tax stuff that you got to worry about. Mm. When I started talking to some of these people in the workshops that we make, it became very clear that now, we, we know that it's a male-dominated field, and that in itself isn't a bad thing. But the problem is that a lot of these folks felt scared to ask stupid questions. So it's just like, forestry is a super jargony area. And, yeah. you know, you throw around a term like basal area, and people, <laughs> if you hadn't taken the classes, you're just like, I don't know what that is, much less if I need yeah. to measure it and how and that what that applicable? means for how much money I can make or this and that. But I think for, especially for, for the older generations that we're working with, they're not used to having a place at the table. And so mm-hmm. a lot of times these women will inherit this property, say their husband dies or um, their father dies or, or, or something like that. And they'll just have it thrown in their lap and they're just like, I don't, I don't know where to begin. And unfortunately, there's also um, a lot of business out there who want to buy this Uh, property from them for way less than it's worth. Um, And so we want to make sure that they have the proper tools to um, turn this land into whatever they want to see. And um, the cool thing about it for me is learning that land management can mean so many different things for so many different people. If you want to manage it for timber, that's awesome. And, And you can really make um, a huge amount of money and set up your kids inheritance college tuition whatever off of timber management but then some people want to manage it for recreation or hunting or conservation aspects or whatever and um, the whole it depends of land management has been where um, I've been learning a ton and just to see that it's just like there's so many different perspectives out there and 
and it really is a niche that needs to be filled and I could just go on and on but I, I, I've just it's, it's such an inspiring group of people that come together and um, it's been really inter interesting to see um, how much of, how useful it is to people in real time and uh, how much of a response that we're already getting, I think just, just speaks to that. So um, yeah, I can't say enough and I encourage anybody who happens to watch this to look up the chapter in their state and see how they can get involved. Um, I know Janet and I, we hold free webinars every fall and every spring. So you, at the very least, you can start there and, and see if it interests you and, um, you know, give us ideas on, on the type of information that you'd like us to share and, and, and we'll just go from there. But um, really possibilities are endless. It's a, it's a neat organization. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, no, I, I can definitely see why you could just keep talking about it. I could keep listening to it, honestly. Yeah. That's really cool. Um, it sounds extremely empowering and aspects like, I mean, you're talking about like people's lives, um, financial aspects, you know, how, what do I do with this? Uh, how can I grow this income? Or uh, I, I imagine there's tons of people that didn't even know that they could make income from the land. Um, I mean, cause yeah, like, exactly. I, that's, that, that was never in my mind, you know, and I grew up yeah. in a household that, you know, business was like, you know, it was all about business and uh, I just never thought about it land management yeah. is money so that's really cool yeah god that's that's actually mind-blowing like it's really cool stuff i'll make sure that um i link it and you know i'll get with you make sure oh, that cool. i get the right links and stuff uh in the yeah, description i'll, I'll send you that, that info that okay, would be cool. great thanks yeah that's really cool okay so did you say that it's it so it was the funding from saf or is this is this like under saf's umbrella or yeah, I think Janet got the funding through SAF, but it, it can come from a bunch of different forestry-oriented okay. organizations. Okay, I got the, you. Women Owning Woodlands is not affiliated, yeah. Okay, yeah. all right, cool. All right, but it is a network yeah. thing. I mean, like from state to state, is it interstate? Um, or basically every state's kind of its own independent group. It is a network, so they will have... We're, we're now... Um, They'll have meetings where the leaders kind of come together and uh, yeah. it seems like maybe monthly. And then on their website, they have, um, they're always putting out material that the different leaders provide. So from Janet and I, it's a bunch of virtual workshops since it's been, you know, pandemic times, yeah, but there's yeah. fact sheets and um, I don't know, informational video, radio segments, stuff like that. So they kind of aggregate everything that we do in individual states and hold it under that national umbrella. It's, okay, it's yeah. a really wonderfully run organization. No, that's really cool. That's really cool. I don't even know. Um, I don't know if there's an Oklahoma chapter or not. I don't so either. So that's something, you know, that. worth looking into. Yeah. I, yeah. And yeah, that's that's really cool. Yeah, I'm going to look into it. <laughs> I'm, glad, I'm glad I learned more about it because, uh, you know, like seeing it written, you know, women owning woodland. Um, it's like, oh, yeah, that's cool. Like, I'm sure that there is that, you know. But until right. you are impacted by it or learn more about it, um, yeah, I had no idea, like, the, the kind of impact that it's able to make. So that's really cool. Yeah, they've got lots of good resources. So, to, like, to I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, okay. sorry, sorry. No, Go I was going to, I was just going to say, like, you, like, you're in very, you're involved in very high impact things. And it certainly sounds like your career trajectory, what you're wanting is to continue that route. Does that seem right or? Yeah. 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 I, I, <laughs> the list of questions that you gave and that one of just like, where do you see yourself? You know, that already just is just like, oh, yeah, know. yeah, um, yeah. But you're helping me sort of distill that. It's just like, I don't know specifically what entity that I want to work with. Like, you know, I never necessarily saw myself as a full professor or in industry or working for the government or whatever, but, but it's exactly that. It's like if the through thread is, is working with the public in, in this way and continuing yeah. to educate in, in, in some form and if I can stay in forestry and conservation and, and spread the good word about bugs, then that all works for me. It's just, I'm not sure how that's going to manifest. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, we never do, right? Like, you never do know where you're going to be in five years. You can make some goals and stuff like that. But, uh, no, I, I think it's cool that you're on a path that you're that you're enjoying. Um, 
Uh, I, I mean, like that's, that. Attitude. That's what it's about. You know, you got. <laughs> yeah. If you can enjoy where you're at today, that is amazing because especially today, <laughs> like everybody's just trying to keep really? it together. So if you're like enjoying it, like just keep enjoying it. You know. So I'm glad you yeah, have. Right. I'm glad you're on that path. That's really cool. Um, okay, so let's have a couple of questions. All right. Okay. This is question round. Okay. All so right. the first one I always ask, because it's my favorite question, even though it's one that I can't answer for myself. Okay. Oh, all right. <laughs> yeah, I know. I, I try to build it up. What is your favorite? <laughs> what is your favorite tree? Tree, right? Oh, yeah, that was a hard one. <laughs> yeah, hard I know. One. I know. Surprisingly <laughs> tough, isn't it? It's straightforward, like but really difficult to answer. Right? The more you think about it, mm -hmm. like, well, is that, mm -hmm. is that really my truth? I'm not sure. I, <laughs> so I'm, I'm like sentimental to a fault. It, it's, it is terrible. And so where my first thought goes is there was this weeping willow tree that I spent my childhood under and I would always go down by our Creek and read under it. And, you know, it was very like, cataloging my life I can think of it as like the whole giving tree like growing up under yeah, that tree. yeah yeah right love that tree Oof. weeping willow always has a place in my heart for that but man whenever I get to go back down south the thing that pops into my head is how powerful those live oaks look with the oh, Spanish yeah. moss they are so ancient <laughs> looking they're just they're like stately trees yeah exactly exactly they just they 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 look like like I don't know just life force incarnate and they have their own little ecosystems in them and i and i love the, the moss and, and and their silhouettes against the, the skies and i just being out in this arid country man i never thought i'd say it but i miss that humidity <laughs> horribly so yeah it, no it yeah for awful. sure no that's <laughs> awesome well done well done two solid answers <laughs> Thanks. yeah all right nice <laughs> two for it. one all right so <laughs> Those are my favorites too, by the way. Like, I mean, they're all my favorites. So I get to always say that. But yeah, willows for sure. Yeah. I had a childhood willow for a time. Then we really? moved. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't, oh, it was no. not down by the river. I didn't get to sit under it. Uh, you know, I can read. But yeah, it was cool. I kind of imagined um, it's kind of like uh, Totoro, like, you know, like you just kind of get to hide in you know like this little space and like you can see things Building out but, but it yeah it feels like magical totally. like you know it's that whole like if i cover my eyes you can't see me kind of deal you know totally yeah you get yeah. it yes yeah. willow people we get it <laughs> know, all right, know, right? <laughs> okay so my <laughs> next my next question is what is your favorite fireside food and beverage oh i like that one too I mean, pretty basic, but why mess with success is hot dog and an IPA. I don't, hey, yeah, like, all right. that sounds, I could have that right now. That sounds incredible, but, you know, more of a savory than a sweet person. Some more has never really did much for me, so gotta, yeah, yeah stick with a hot dog and a beer. That, all right. Do it. Very yeah. classic. All right. No, that's, that's cool. <laughs> you, you really are from the South. Wow. Okay. So... <laughs> Uh, let's see. What next? What next? Okay. Do you have a favorite childhood cartoon or current cartoon? Oh yeah. This you know, like we watch our, our house is always has cartoons on, whether it's for me or the kids. Yeah. I'd be curious on what you guys are watching too. I, oh yeah. I, I, Stuff gets kind of wild these days, but like some of it I like, so it's all right. Yeah. Right. I'm like, what are the kids? What, what kind of programming are they being given? <laughs> Arthur, it's Arthur. All, all kinds wait what who i think the what? simpsons i gotta simpsons, say the yeah. simpsons yeah okay all right it's a classic. Yeah, that's, that's classic that's classic you stick yeah. to the classics yeah. like i i i definitely understand like you're like oh, oh i gotta like analyze 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 but then like on your favorites you like stick to some really solid ones i see that yeah, yeah. you got I this pattern going. i can't okay. argue with it you turn it on any night of the week it still cracks me up it's it's yeah. evergreen yeah. <laughs> All right, so let's see what else. Okay, if you could go back to your teenage self, what would you mm -hmm. tell Molly? What advice would you give? Yeah, I love that question. I, 
I would still be hypocritical at this point because I want to say like relax, but I'm still <laughs> the most like anxious, keyed up person. So like I think my older self would want to tell current self that too. But um, I am a worrier, and I spend so much time like agonizing over what might happen and so often none of that comes to pass and as you get older you try and figure out how to just chill the hell out and mm. like you were saying earlier it, enjoy where you're at because it's good so that whole mindfulness stay present kind of thing I, I really whew, that would have gone a long way for me as a kid and and I, I think too I, I've also I've always had um pretty low self-esteem so just kind of like letting that person know that, that like the decisions you're making are valid the path that you're on is valid have a little trust in that and yeah, you might yeah. be surprised where it leads you know and yeah instead of second guessing so much <laughs> yeah no I like but having that. that's good I feel like I'm in therapy that's very helpful to hear out loud <laughs> it's like kind of tell myself that right now today it's, it's helpful yeah it's well you know i think that like you know that question is such a good exercise in uh self you know evaluation and you know we're, we're really actually yeah. projecting our what we want right now onto our past selves right so yeah totally. it's 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 kind of a trick question i guess i don't mean to ask it's it I'm, I'm not trying to be a therapist but you know um love, okay Okay, good. Um, <laughs> so one more therapy-like question for you, okay? If okay. your future self made it, doing whatever future Molly is doing, okay? She's retired <laughs> or she's still working or whatever. If she could come back, what would you want her to tell you right now or be able to tell you? I don't want to just give the same answer. That's okay. But I think it is going to be sort of along the same lines, like it's worked so far and I'm picturing this woman and, and I'm, I'm hoping to live like, you know, a long fulfilling life. And I think that the, the through thread, like I think kindness is incredibly important and I think generosity is incredibly important and I think it forces you to kind of get out of the whole, like the, the problems that I was talking about, like the anxiety and the doubt and the worry, like that is so inward. And if you can focus on those goals to kind of bring yourself out of being so sucked into your inner turmoil, then that helps you and that helps the people around you. So I think if I can stick on that path, then hopefully I can. And if my older version of myself can give myself that advice right now, and that would yeah. be good that would make me very that's, happy and, and I that's awesome like I <laughs> yeah yeah no I think you just did give yourself that advice and me too uh that's really good it resonates it resonates yeah that's cool Question. yeah I like that <laughs> all right well let's see let's let's do one more question I'm going okay. from my memory, which you would think after like eight times I would have these like down. that's not I so don't. many I'm so yeah, I'm so true. I'm so reliant on my paper um, I've got them here. Oh, good. Pick one. Pick yeah. one and ask it and then okay. answer it. How about that? That sounds good. From the icebreaker ones? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Um... Oh, well, this kind of, when I was picturing, when I was just answering the last question, I was picturing okay. this person. So if your life was turned into a movie, who would you want to play you? Awesome. I love this question. I'm always wary of asking it. it because it's like a lot of people don't think of that. I don't have an answer for me. So yeah, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead. No, well, no, 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 no. Do it. Do it. Do it. <laughs> I like, this is like one of my um, favorite ones. So please do. Okay, cool. Good. Me, me too. So I have always, I'm obsessed with Angelica Houston as uh -huh. like, there are not too many like powerful leading ladies who are doing their own thing that you see in pop culture, right? Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen, have you ever seen Lonesome Dove, that mini series that was on? If you haven't, yeah. I'm like imploring you to. No, 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 no. Like I definitely have seen it because I don't think you could be a child growing up in like the 80s and 90s 
or whenever it was okay, okay. and be at yeah. home by yourself and not like on every that. Sunday. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Well, it may, it may not like hit me too much. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. That, that's no, she be. was like this badass. She has the best fashion. Like every Wes Anderson movie, she is like the matriarch. She she is the one with the power. And she seems yeah. so sure of herself, but also like so fabulous at the same time. Like she has this like <laughs> femininity, but like, I don't know. She just, if I could channel all of that, if that's what older Molly could end up being, then I, then I would be happy. But when I, when I was that's reading awesome. that, I'm like, who, who? That's the one. That's the one right there. I like that. I, you know, I may, I think I'm not giving people enough credit. And I think what it is, is that I just need to get answers to all these questions. I feel more confident and I be okay with asking them. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll come up with an answer at in one episode down the road. I'll like send you a message and say, Hey, I finally answered this question. So yeah. Yeah. If you ever need someone to interview you so you can answer your okay. own questions, I'm yeah. happy to do okay. it. <laughs> okay no i like being on this side of it <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right molly this is awesome oh if if uh people want to reach out to you if people want to oh, yeah. reach out to you uh what's the best way for them to do that um well like we were saying i mean twitter is pretty powerful tool these days and, and that's nice yep. and easy to remember um i'm just at dar d-a-r-r -R dot molly m-o-l-l-y um on Twitter. So you can find me there. And then all my other contact information is right there. But okay. I would love to meet more people in the community or outside the community. Please reach out. The pandemic's so lonely. Let's talk. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. No, I, I, I'm, I'm glad. I'm glad that you agreed to come on. That's just awesome. I've been really enjoyed this. This has been so much fun, Joe. Cool. I'm glad you've you liked it too. me a lot to think about. Good. That, that's really <laughs> what I'm trying to do. I'm offering free counseling services. So <laughs> yeah I mean, if, if i ever if i ever get this monetized or get some sponsors i'm gonna start like charging people you know it's gonna be like you know i swear on. you should <laughs> and get better help you know can be your be your sponsor yeah well let's hope no. here's here's to uh molly and joe down the road being able to say oh, remember back in the day when we were just <laughs> poor and you know doing our little chat <laughs> oh you know we're choppy internet hard. yeah yeah pandemic uh, world yeah That's we're hilarious. we're gonna we're gonna make yeah. it don't worry we're gonna be big <laughs> yeah oh i'm and i was here at the ground floor i feel That's i feel right. so privileged i feel so <laughs> lucky me too me too thank you for bringing me in you're so good at what you do this has oh, been this has been highlight of the week easily <laughs> awesome well thanks for that yeah no likewise this is really fun i love doing this and it was such a great fun time to chat with you and i look forward to our next one and even like our off recorded ones where we can just like really yeah. chat and maybe do like therapy sessions right that sounds great That's, right. i need to hear more about australia yeah yeah okay yeah yeah we'll definitely chat about new zealand and australia all right okay. <laughs> all right molly take care I'll Good. see you Take and I'll care. be talking to you on the Twitterverse. Bye. Okay. Looking forward to it. Take care. Bye. Thank you. Bye.